We're going to add panning and zooming to these circles using D3 Zoom. Panning is when you click and drag, and zooming is when you use the scroll wheel or multi-touch events to zoom in and out. Zooming is a useful interaction when you have visualizations that have a lot of detail in certain places, like maps in particular. Let's take a look at how we can use D3 Zoom to make this set of circles zoomable. I'll start by forking this viz. Zoomable circles with D3 Zoom. I'll clear out the readme. And let's take a look at the documentation for D3 Zoom. Panning and zooming let the user focus on a region of interest by restricting the view. Here's an example that sets up zooming. I'll paste that code here for reference. It uses selection.call to invoke an instance of D3 Zoom, which has an event listener for the Zoom event. To get started, I will import Zoom from D3. And I think it makes sense to put it on the SVG directly, so I'll say const zoom behavior equals zoom dot on zoom, a function that just will console.log zoomed. And to link it up with our SVG, we can use svg.call zoom behavior. Now when I go to the graphic and I use the scroll wheel, it says zoomed. And if I click and drag, it says zoomed. OK, that's how you set up a zoom behavior. Now let's use it to track something on our state that will actually move these circles around. When a zoom event listener is invoked, it receives the current zoom event as the first argument. This has a property called transform, which is the current zoom transform. The zoom transform is a representation of a transformation matrix. This two-dimensional transformation matrix keeps track of how much you zoomed in and where you panned to. How much you zoomed in is transform.k. Where you panned to is transform.x and y. The way that we can use these is just to set the transform attribute of a group element to be the transform itself out of the zoom event, taking advantage of transform.toString, which returns a value that you can use for transform on SVG that just surfaces x, y, and k in the proper way. All right, let's apply this in our code. Step one is to access event dot transform. I'll just log it out to make sure we got it. And there it is, an object with x, y, and k. I would like to use unidirectional data flow here. And this transform object seems like a reasonable thing to put onto our state as maybe state dot transform. So whenever we get this new event, we can call, <clears throat> scratch that, we can call set state passing a function that computes a new state object using immutable update patterns and sets transform to be event.transform. Now we need to access set state and state and then we can access state.transform by destructuring it, scratch that, by destructuring it from the state. Currently, we are putting these circles as children of our SVG element. But in order to get the zooming to work, we should put the circles inside of a group element. That way we can set the transform on that group element and it will apply to all the children, all the circles. To do that, we can use pretty much the same pattern we used for the SVG. I'll just paste that. I'll call it G, and this will operate on SVG, and it will select all G elements and uh, manage a single G element. Now instead of svg.selectAllCircle, we can say g.selectAllCircle. Now we're in a position to apply the transform to this group element. 
We can do this by saying g.attr transform is going to be transform from our state. And now let's see if it works. If I click and drag, it does work. And if I use the scroll wheel, it does zoom. All right, amazing. That's how you can use D3Zoom to add panning and zooming to your graphics. To recap the changes we made, we imported Zoom from D3 so that we could instantiate a Zoom behavior that responds to Zoom events by setting the state to contain a property called state.transform, which is derived from event.transform. We had to get access to state and set state by destructuring them from the second argument to main. And then we connect the zoom behavior to the SVG using svg.call. Next, we had to put all of our circles inside of a group element so that we could set the transform attribute to be transform on that group element, which causes the transform to be applied to all the children. And here's a challenge for you. Use this technique, scratch that, use this technique to add zooming to a visualization that you created, such as a map. Thanks for watching, and good luck.